Oh, there we are. Can you see me now? Are we live? I don't, I don't know. I got Emma, although Emma's chat was half an hour ago. Teen Emma, love it. Oh, golly gosh, how are you? Welcome to the live stream. I thought I'd do a bit of an impromptu live stream on why men struggle, why they hesitate to open up and share their insecurities. So I jump on, I haven't said, uh, I haven't done a live stream in a little while and I want to make more of a regular thing of this. I've been producing a ton of content lately and I thought this would be an interesting topic to talk about. So let me know if you can see and hear me. What is up, Melanie? Great to have you on here. I've got to make sure I look at the camera. I'm so used to looking at your clients down here. You are actually up here. So hello. Hey, Melanie, great to have you on here. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. If I look a little flustered, it's because I had to rush home from the gym. So I, uh, I, I don't worry. I did clean myself. I did shower. We're all good, but I'm still a little. Actually, I had a bit of an adventure today, an adventure named the Stairmaster. Never do cardio, not a cardio guy. I think this is the first time in two years at the gym I've been in the cardio room, but I was sitting there in the weights today going, you know what? I'm, my, my brain's not in this. Something's wrong today. I, I cannot lift this weight. It wasn't the it wasn't the weight of it. It was mental. And I said, maybe I just need to call it today. I said, but and then I said, no, you know what? I'm here. Let's see what's going on in the cardio room. Pirates of the Caribbean's playing. Number three. Yours truly hits a stairmaster for 50 minutes in what would have otherwise been the worst gym session of the week. So that's my win for today. Great. Ah, oh, here we go. We've got some chats now. This is what I like to see. Thank you, Blue Eyes. Good evening. Much love. Melanie can hear me. Excellent. We've got Joanne. Excellent. Can hear me. The microphone appears to be working. What's up, Peggy? What is up? Greetings from London. What time is it in London, Roxy? It must be bloody late where you are, 3 a.m. or something. Um, congrats on your win. Condolences to the Aussies in the room. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the English women's soccer team made mincemeat of the Australians women's soccer team last night. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was sad. We did really well. We didn't, we don't, we don't, you know, we're not good at soccer. It's not really our thing. So for us to get to the semifinals of the world cup was, oh my God, the whole nation, they had 4 million viewers of the quarterfinal and there's only like 30 million people. I want to say in Australia, so about 15% of the entire country watched the quarterfinal. I'm not even sure what the viewing numbers in the semi-final were, but shout out to UK friends. You definitely earned, you definitely earned that win playing Spain in the final. Let's talk a little bit about why men hesitate to open up and share their insecurities with you. Very quickly before I share that, don't forget if you haven't yet joined, you should be in the Queens Club. Not only does it have all of my courses that I've created over seven years for free, you can access them for free, whether you want to go through your blueprint of your history, understand your patterns, whether you want to build an incredible vision, whether you want to shift your identity to the woman who creates that amazing relationship future, uh, online, offline, whether you want to, what's another one that's big in there? Communication, there's, uh, getting over an X, there's, everything's in there. If you're not a member, you're crazy. You've got to be a member. It's just, just it's a no-brainer deal. So jump in the Queen's Club. I'll put the thing here. It's school.com forward slash Q Club. Let's talk about why men hesitate to open up and share their insecurities. So if anyone got the newsletter this morning, pop it in the chat because you might have an idea where we're going to go with this. What I'm going to talk about today is to understand men. It's not to excuse behavior, but as women who want to date men, I think it's helpful that you understand our mentality to this. You have to understand that for, for men, we are very conscious of our mating value. Go figure, right? We are conscious of how we're coming across to you. We want to be attractive. We want to we, we want to have a positive influence on you. We know that the way we are perceived by women is basically the number one thing that determines our value. How attractive we are, how valuable we are, how useful we are. It's all a huge thing for men. Now, let me know in the chat if you've had this challenge of, well, I just want my partner to open up to me more. I just want him to be more vulnerable. I just want him to share more. I just want him to maybe share these insecurities instead of just hiding it away. If you can relate to that, either post a one or let me know in the chat. Pop it in there. I'd like to see it. The reason this is so important is because for men, speaking on behalf of men, the same things that we perceive women want in dating are not often the things that they equally want in relationships. 
vulnerability, showing insecurity, showing a lack of trust in yourself, really opening up and showing some self-doubt. These are not things you're going to put on Instagram. These are not things you talk about on the first day. Every man knows that these are not attractive things. They do build connection in a relationship, but they're not attractive. They're not biologically attractive. So what you have to remember about men is that these things don't come naturally to us because they're not typical courting behaviors. Now, most men are aware that probably sharing an insecurity might be a little bit good for us, or it might be an idea, or it might be okay with a girlfriend, but it doesn't come naturally because we know deep down that you, every woman has kind of a limit. I think of this as an acceptable vulnerability limit. Yeah, a few of you can relate, great. Acceptable vulnerability limit. I'm going to put that. Ah, oh, I spelt it wrong. Oh, golly gosh. Okay. Don't mind my typo. Acceptable vulnerability limit. All right. So what this means is that men are aware that there is always a level of insecurity, a level of vulnerability that will switch a woman off. In dating, it's quite a small amount. Now, cognitively as men, we understand that as you get further into a relationship, it's probably a bit more. Like if I show a little bit of insecurity around her, it's probably fine. You know, if, if, I, if I'm a little bit uncertain, it's probably fine. But it's very hard for us to know where that line is. So what do humans do when we're not sure? We tend to err on the side of caution. So a man attracts you without using too much vulnerability, without showing much insecurity, and that's natural courting behavior. You don't show that stuff on a first date, second date, really until you get further into a relationship. But it's a hard thing for a man to know. He has to, a, a man is reading you. A man is reading you as a woman to know if he's emotionally safe, to know if he can go there. But it's not always a solid read. Okay, he's basing his read off what he understands of you, what he understands about women in general, what he understood he was allowed to do from his mother. So he's kind of getting to know you. And he's thinking just the same way with a man. Actually, this is a really good metaphor. The same way you are thinking, am I physically safe with this guy? A man is going, am I emotionally safe with her? If I share, if I get too vulnerable, am I going to be the feminine? Am I going to be the weak one? Is she going to lose respect and attraction for me? So am I safe to share a little bit of that without being ball busted? And because a man doesn't know where that line is with you, and because it's different with every single woman, what men tend to do is err on the side of caution. Human beings in general, we err on the side of caution when we're not sure if there's danger or not. Now, this can change a little bit, you know, for, for very young people. But in general, humans' behavior, we tend to err on the side of caution. So if a man is going, all right, should I share with her? Should I share an insecurity? Should I open up to her about my doubts? Am I close to the limit? Am I close to the point where she's going to stop being attracted to me? Uh, if there's any doubt, he's probably going to go, nah, I'll keep it inside. It's fine. Don't need to share that. Don't want to upset her. Don't want to make her day bad. And also don't want her to lose attraction and respect for me. So you have to understand that as a woman, and don't, don't deny this, you have a limit. You have a limit to how much vulnerability, uncertainty, insecurity you can tolerate in a partner before it becomes unattractive. If your partner is like a hyper-masculine, Navy SEAL, black belt, you know, fireman, then he can probably be pretty vulnerable with you and show a level of insecurity quite a bit before it becomes unattractive. But for other men who may not have that same level of sort of masculine confidence, it can be a little uncertain. Like, how much can I show before she loses respect for me? I don't know. This is one of the challenges for modern men. It's us understanding that we're allowed to go a little way into that and kind of feel out where that line is. But also knowing that every woman has a limit. She doesn't want to hear you wallowing. She doesn't want to hear about all your insecurities every day. She doesn't want to hear you not knowing what to do, where she has to take all the charge and leadership decisions because every man knows that's not attractive and eventually she's going to leave him if he keeps doing that. So men are, the reason men are hesitating to open up and share their insecurities is we are always conscious of like, what is her limit? How safe am I with her? And at what point is too much for this woman? When have I shared too many insecurities? 
when have I opened up vulnerably too much? When is she secretly becoming unattractive to me? Is uh, unattractive to me? Is she not telling me? So we tend to err on the side of caution. That's the primary reason we struggle. Now you might be thinking, well, what can I do about it? Great question. The biggest thing you can do, two things, is make a safe space for him, number one. If you really shame a guy or if you really kind of, a woman can get triggered if a man shows insecurity because she starts to feel unsafe and then she can throttle that behavior without realizing she's doing it. And he doesn't then, he's like, oh my God, she's losing faith in me. I feel like a pussy. I'm the feminine. I'm definitely not saying any of that again. And so he shuts down. She feels unsafe. And then they grow further apart. That's the biggest thing. The other thing you can do is if a guy is doing it too much, give him that feedback in a compassionate but honest way, which is like, hey, can I share some feedback? Or do you want me to be really honest? Look, when this happens, when it happens on repeat, I'm just going to be totally honest here. I do feel a little bit less attracted to you. And I believe in you and I support you and I want you to be able to do this. And there's some times where it's like, I love it when you figure it out. And I love it when you give me that confidence and you just let me know that we got this, babe. It's hard, right? Because you don't want to train a man to never share his uncertainty. and You don't want to train a man to never open up. So it depends a lot on the man you're dealing with. If you've got the typical complaint, which is a guy who doesn't do it enough, create that safe space for him. If, however, you've got the opposite end of the spectrum, a guy that does it too much, often men will need that feedback. Those men can be under functioners and they really need that feedback from good women that, hey, this behavior isn't super attractive. That's just me being super honest. How about we look at changing that? Would you be open to changing that? And many of those men will respond quite well if the feedback is given honestly and compassionately. So let me know if that makes sense. Um, if there's any questions, pop them in the chat. And don't forget the Queen's Club is now open. It's my free club that you can join. And we're all in there creating a community, women who love men, men who love women, just connecting and making sure that you have not only have access to the best materials, but also a community that supports you, heaps of education. Yeah, it's just really good stuff. I just noticed the room is a little bit dark, actually. Do I have a light? No, I don't really have a light available. Yeah, bugger. Look, if you have any questions about that, everyone's been pretty quiet. Pop it in the chat here. It's 7.03 p.m. in my part of calendar, says Canada, says Melanie. Where are we now? It is 5.13 here, Melanie. So you must be, uh, what's that, west of Toronto, Ontario, is it? How good is my uh, Canadian geography? 1 a.m. Do you have any questions? Makes perfect sense, says Joanne. Nice. Jasmine says, how are you? I'm great. I did 130 falls on the Stairmaster today. Never do cardio. That's my win for the day. Angel says, hi, how are you doing, Angel? Great to have you on here. Cindy, good to see your face, face-ish on here, Cindy. Blue eyes, says she can relate as well. So if you have just joined, we've been talking about acceptable vulnerability limit. And basically, men have this inherent genetic thing where we realize that vulnerability and insecurity can ultimately cause you to lose faith in us, lose attraction for us and lose respect for us. Now, the limit is different with every woman. If he's had an ex where the first time he showed insecurity, she totally went out, left him and cheated on him. God damn, that guy with you is definitely going to err on the side of caution and probably not share any insecurities. So between masculine conditioning, any conditioning he might have had from exes, it's really hard for a man to creep towards what might be safe. And there's a limit for every woman. So you've got to kind of help him feel safe within your limits, but also communicate if he is wallowing or if he is st staying in that victim energy too much, because men do need honest feedback about when we do things that are not uh, not aligned with our best self. Best self is not going to wallow. Best self is not going to stay there and say, woe is me. Best self is not going to say, sit there for you know, days, weeks, months and say, I don't know, I can't fix this. You know, Best self is not going to do that. So it's really important for you as a woman to call that out, set boundaries with it compassionately, but not be afraid to speak to how it's affecting you. Don't underestimate the, the value of feedback from a great woman. Really, really powerful. Well, look, I'm assuming you guys don't have any questions here because you have just been totally like responsive, but no questions for right now. So if you have a question, I'll give you 30 seconds. Otherwise, we can do this again next week or in two weeks, if you would like. Joanne says, makes perfect sense. Jasmine, oh, it's great to see you all. How good's doing alive? Yeah, it's great to, great to be here. Mm -hmm. 
God, you can tell I just came back from the gym, can't you? Far out. I get my collar right. I look all red. Let's see what Roxy said. Roxy says, my boyfriend only, my boyfriend opened up from the beginning, even when we were only chatting online, but he wouldn't have done it if I didn't open up first. I managed to own his trust. Yeah, this is really powerful here from Roxy because when it's physical, a man's going to lead the safety. As in, he is going to say, okay, babe, you know, dark alley, dark room, dark house. He's going to check out the corners. He's going to, he's going to sort of explore the, explore the cupboards and look, look in, look at the shadows and all that stuff. And then once he's done that, you'll be able to walk around in that space and feel safe. It's the same, but opposite with emotions. Just like Roxy said here, a lot of the time, masculine men won't open up until you have shown that your breath, you've explored the emotional area and you've made it safe, which means he's not going to get ragged out, called a pussy, called feminine, you know, he, he's not going to get that because you've already accepted those parts of yourself. So if you share, if you're vulnerable, if you've already gone there, then because you've accepted those parts of yourself, the odds of you shaming him for it is pretty, is pretty low, right? Oh, she's accepted that part of herself. So she's not going to make fun of me for it. This is sometimes why if you're a very successful woman, if you run a business, if you really had to use a lot of masculine energy in your life, unfortunately, you may have some attraction issues if you don't get more on your feminine energy around masculine men. To masculine men, you won't feel as safe. Masculine men choose feminine women because they are safer. Their bros are their competition. Their bros are the ones who call them out, you know, call them names, call them pussies, like, their bros are the ones to challenge them. They don't come to their relationship for that. So if you do carry more of that masculine challenging energy in your work, one of the things you've got to work on is expanding your emotional range when you're with men because he's not going to go outside of your area unless he's an underfunctioning feminine guy. But a masculine guy is not going to go outside of your area. So the wider your area is, the more he can wander around in it and feel safe. Hopefully that makes sense. Do men like women to be vulnerable? They do. They do. It's absolutely beautiful. Uninhibited yes to that. Absolutely. Obviously, there's a time and a place. Don't show up on a first date and share all your deepest insecurities. That it, Yes, appropriately. But yes. Thanks for your wisdom. So how do you handle a man who is coming from being cheated on? How to help them open up? Yeah, great question. So number one, if he's doing pulling away behavior, you do have to set boundaries with that. But you can also be compassionate in the way you communicate. So a lot of the time, it's about responding to the behavior that's in front of you. So for example, if he's pulling away, you can be compassionate, you can understand, you can say, you know, like, I know why you're doing this, and I totally get it. So this is kind of where my line sits. How do you feel with that? And he can then decide to step over that or, or not be within that. I think the other thing you can do is just... I know it's super basic, but just kind of be there to, to make it safe for him. So you can make statements like, well, you know, I very much have the relationship philosophy that if I'm disinterested in someone to the point where it's even getting close to cheating, like I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm not the type to go behind someone's back when I'm unhappy. I'm the type to just speak it to your face. If you've never cheated on someone, that's something else you could share. You know, I've never cheated on a guy, but I've definitely left a few who I stopped being attracted to. So you can sort of frame up your reality there. Um, how did how did my partner help me feel safe? I'm just thinking. Yeah, she basically used that. She basically said, well, look, you will, you will know when I'm unsatisfied in the relationship because I'm just going to tell you. You know, I'm not going to shy away from that. So men who have been cheated on, they have that trauma. And so that trauma is going to cause certain behaviors that are probably going to be not you know, they might pull away randomly or they might even go and cheat themselves. So there's certain behaviors you have to set boundaries with. You do that compassionately. And then on the other hand, creating safety and basically telling a story that the, the, the past is unlikely to repeat. The best stories are always told with actions rather than words, but you can start to plant the seeds with words. So again, saying things like, yeah, you know, I'm always the type that's spoken up. It's not something that I've done before. You know, I want you to feel really safe. Um, but at the end of the day, if you have insecurities, you can always share them with me or ask them of me. I want you to feel safe that like, if I'm losing interest in you, or if I have a problem that I'm going to come to you and you can even ask him, you know, is there anything I can say to you that would really help? 
There's a thing called language needles. And if your partner's able to identify that insecurity, for example, oh, she cheated on me um, just after, after we had a fight, she'd pull away and cheat on me. So he asks you to say after a fight, hey, babe, when we fight, I need space and I still love you. You can often pick a statement that directly antidotes the, uh, the insecurity in the person. That can really help. I hope that answers your question. Oh, thank you, Blue String. Appreciate you. Yeah, we'll do it more often. We'll do it more often. Let's see. Ah, oh, Peggy. That's great. There's a great level of trust in my relationship. We've known each other for five years. Love that. Love that. Let's see. Angel says, how do you let him know if he's moving too fast without hurting his feelings and pushing him away? You have to understand that your honesty, your authenticity always risks hurting someone's feelings. There is no way to be authentic in the world and not hurt someone's feelings. It is simply impossible. So if your goal is to be an authentic human being, to be as honest with yourself and others and to be loved for who you are, then you have no choice at some point to risk and probably actually hurt someone's feelings. It's not, doesn't make you a bad person to hurt someone's feelings. As kids, many of you watching might be able to relate to what Angel said here. As kids, when we hurt someone's feelings, we automatically assume I am bad. And often that's reinforced by our fragile parents. And so we start to go, oh, I'm not allowed to hurt anyone's feelings because that makes me a bad person. Actually, no, good people hurt others' feelings all the time. It's simply a fact of being honest that you're going to hurt someone's feelings. So understand that one of the biggest relationship skills that sets healthy relationships apart from unhealthy ones is that there is a risk to have those difficult conversations and hurt someone's feelings, whether it's work, uh, friends, uh, romantic. You, you can't have a truly healthy, connected relationship without risking hurting someone's feelings. Now, pushing him away also a different story. But yes, you can let him know that, hey, you know, I do like you. You can reassure him. I do like you. I'm enjoying where this is going. And I want to let you know that it's going to take me time. This is nothing to do with you. This is a promise I made for myself that any man that I see, it's going to take me a bit of time to commit. It's, it's going to take me some time to label anything. That was just a promise I made to myself. It's nothing to do with you. So depersonalize it off of him. And when you say that, then you can add, look, it would really mean a lot to me if you know, this would be something you're open to, whatever that is. If we'd be open to slowing it down, maybe just seeing each other twice a week, maybe not going ex exclusive yet, blah, 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 whatever it is. Maybe not using babe or hey, love or whatever the word, whatever he's doing that's making it feel too fast. You figure out what you need and want to ask for. And then you ask it and you make sure that he goes, hey, it's not me. This is just something she's doing for herself. And she is into me because they're the two big things that a guy might feel here. Oh, it's something wrong with me or oh, she's not interested. Like it's a very personal thing or oh, she's just she's just not into me. So if you can antidote those two, then the good guys will stick around and the guys who don't respect your boundaries will unfortunately filter away. And the guys who have too much insecurity to respect your boundaries will do the same thing and filter away. So you will pretty much hurt feelings no matter what you do here. That can't be avoided, but that's not a bad thing. Healthy couples learn to be honest early and risk hurting, risk and potentially actually hurt each other's feelings early because if you can get through that, now you can have all the conversations you need to, right? If I can speak authentically and honestly and risk hurting my partner's feelings, then I never need to run from conversations. I never need to worry that just because I hurt her feelings, she's going to break up with me because she's a fragile little flower. I don't have to worry about that stuff because we've successfully hurt each other's feelings and survived it in the name of the bigger relationship. So don't fear hurting each other's feelings. Um, fear the silence and the lack of healthy conflict and the lack of... Uh, boundaries that actually breaks up relationships. Okay, there's some great questions here. Uh, I do have to bounce now. I have a client waiting. So it was an absolute pleasure. Don't forget to join the Queen's Club. Are you in the Queen's Club? How come you're not in the Queen's Club? Join the Queen's Club. Free group has all my courses. Your face should be in there. I would love to see you in there. That's the Queen's Club link. You can join. We go live every week. We do a hangout. We play some games. Um, and then there's also advanced trainings if you want access to those. So well, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for following my work. It really means the world to me. And I am going to go and see my client now. I'll see you soon.